Miklos Jantso's 1966 feature, The Roundup, is an absolutely remarkable picture. I'm going to, obviously I'm presenting you with these screen caps, some of the most striking cinematography of the 1960s, some of the most ambitious direction of its time of world cinema. I'd like to read out some user reviews from IMDb. Actually, initially I'll, I'll read out the um, submitted synopsis, which was quite good actually, I felt. One, one Eduardo Casais sub, submitted this, excuse me. In Hungary, the national movement led by Kossuth has been crushed and the Austrian hegemony re-established, but partisans carry on with violent actions. In order to root out the guerrilla, the army rounds up suspects and jails them in an isolated fort. The authorities do not have the identity of the guerrilla leaders who are supposed to be present among the prisoners. However, they know enough about some of the suspects to aptly to apply perfidious form, forms of coercion effectively. And now, the, re the reviews I wanted to read out were the ones from over 10 years ago now. I, I really like... I, I love the idea of um, internet film discussion in, like, the 90s and 2000s, before it was this kind of... Back when... Before the cyberspace was just a dimension that we all kind of inhabited... Um, and the idea of just seeking out a film and watching it must have been a more special experience. I mean, you went to a place called the internet, this this vaguely digital, psychedelic, um, lucid hive mind, um, collective conscious that you, know, you discuss it there. I'd like to see what people in that if that mentality, as up from my perspective, um, are typing what they are saying about this film. From February 1999, Lizard 18 gives it 10 out of 10, Thundering Hooves, Wailing Women. The plot description doesn't say at all by any means. Thundering Hooves, Failed and Wailing Women, Desolate Landscapes of Wading Seas of Grass and the Occasional Forbidding Stone Fortress or Burnt House, this movie appeals to nearly all of the five senses. It's been three years since I saw it first, and scenes still flash vividly through my, my, my head. The harsh faces of the guards, the equally harsh faces of the prisoners, blunt and brutal deaths, and overhead the sun burning down, always magnificent. Then from February 2001, definitely a film you won't forget, says John F-8. Miklops Janksaw's The Roundup is not concerned with character development or a complex plot. While this may annoy some, it suits this film perfectly fine. The movie feels very cold and remote, almost Kubrickian in content and style. Surprisingly, there is very little violence in the film, although it seems like that the film is very brutal. Perhaps this is because of emotional hopelessness most of the characters experience in the film. A very worthwhile experience overall, rented, although just don't be prepared to come away smiling. Gave it 8 out of 10. Then from August 2003, Vodka Bird gave it 3 out of 10. The trial of Lynch? He asks. The setting was suitably stark. I loved the scenes around the old woman's house, so desolate and bleak. I enjoyed the Kafkaesque aspect of it and the bluff and double bluff between the protagonists. The main character could have been a real influence on Lynch's Henry in a race ahead, a victim and a loser. Having said that, the film didn't grip me, but it did what it set out to do, I suppose. Hmm. From May 2005, we have Balthazar 5, ideological in a stylistic way, giving it 7 out of 10. Life comes along at a variable pace, and we are constantly repositioning our gaze to obtain the optimum information in order to understand the situation we are in. This is replicated in the cinema through the mise-en-scene and editing of the scenes. Since the 1930s, there has been an either explicit or implicit debate as to whether editing within the scene is a good or bad thing, with Andre Bazin rooting for the unity of the image against montage, editing. Fifteen years before this film, Hitchcock set down a marker with rope, and to a lesser extent under Capricorn, that scenes, indeed whole films, can be made without much in the way of editing, but simply organising the action and camera movement to reveal the same information in a more continuous way. And it's Miklos Jankso. With this film, he, has, he became something of a celebrity in intellectually active film circles by structuring it to be shot in the main, in long takes. Does it work? Well, it works in one way, and that is that it draws attention to the Hungarian plains in which it was shot and which, during the numerous long, slow pans that we see, seem to stretch forever across the landscape. Looking at it again after almost 40 years, I find it difficult to believe that it made such a big kerfuffle. Long-held takes do enhance suspense, hence Hitchcock's temporary enthusiasm for them, but they seem artificial as they do not mimic the action of the eye, which is always on the lookout for something more interesting elsewhere, hence Hitchcock's enthusiasm being only temporary. Hmm. That's a 
not often heard take. I think people, <laughs> film fans, normally love long takes. It's kind of a, it's almost a um, insatiable urge for for great long takes in films. Interesting. The rounding up of prisoners that it portrays is an okay subject for a film, but I think we would have been much more emotionally involved with the characters if we had been treated to reaction shots and the like. Still, we see it as a theoretical slash historical curiosity. That's a very uh, that's an odd take. Anyway, I think this will do for now. Have a great one, everyone. Do view the roundup if you feel so inclined. I do I highly, 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 highly recommend it. Have an extraordinary day, night, wherever you are.